What is that? Hmm. Something's been here. Can we talk about plastic? Let's follow the trail. Where? Turn on the light! Not just bottles and big stuff, although that is important. Tiny plastic. Micro plastic. It must be from a shirt. It is definitely a fiber. Is it this? No, no. Plastics are all around us, yet most of us just don't understand how prevalent they've become. Plastics have permeated not just our landfills and beaches, but the very air and water around us. By applying repeatable methodologies and procedure, scientists with the National Geographic Society are on board EV Nautilus to follow this sometimes literal thread to identify where and how these tiny particles have spread. It's a crime scene of plastic proportions that requires unique areas of expertise and unique ways of studying it. Hmm. Who done it? Nylon? No, it must be polyester! This team of investigators tracing movements of microplastics using a combination of common and easy sampling methodologies that enhance repeatability across the world. These methodologies include testing atmospheric suspension, atmospheric deposition, and sampling surface waters. To explain these concepts, we turn to our international team of researchers who are sampling the air and water in and around the Hawaiian Islands. We love the Nautilus, but we are excited to have a chance to get off the Nautilus and get a lot closer to land. So here we are outside of Ma'alea to do some sampling much closer to a town and some resorts. Each day, we've launched our Zodiac Ruby to sample closer to the shore and collect additional data points that augment the research being done from Nautilus. Although the boats are different, the methods are the same. The Nautilus is way out there, and we're gonna see if sampling closer to land reveals a different amount of microplastic in the air and water. We're using Ruby to test the hypothesis that we'll find microplastic suspended in the air and the water. So this is the atmospheric sampler, which is collecting microplastics that are circulating in the air for analysis. It's just easier, isn't it, when you've got four hands on it than two. As the pump works, the team also prepares to test the hypothesis we'll find microplastics in the surface waters further offshore. So on EV Nautilus, they apply the same procedure. Prepare a clean sampling bucket and make that toss. So this is my bucket, and my bucket is exactly like your bucket. But today, my bucket is gonna be a special bucket because it's gonna be a science bucket and it's gonna collect the microplastic from the surface of the ocean. Now, tossing buckets into the water is a fun activity, but it's a crucial tool for understanding plastics in the water. We're using a metal bucket to avoid contamination and immediately transfer that sample into a clean glass jar for further analysis in the wet lab on Nautilus. Again, we're testing if there's a difference in the amount of microplastic close to shore versus further offshore. Is Hawaii a sink for the world's microplastic pollution in addition to being a source? The team finishes up their sampling, eager to get back to the lab. Right, we're back here in the wet lab of the Nautilus and this is where we take our raw sample and turn it into a process sample. We do this by a series of steps that we've taken from forensic science and we do this as a team where each team member takes one particular step which leads to the end product where I can analyse the microfibers found in the water and the air. Analysis of microplastics requires careful planning and deliberation on behalf of the team. 
This includes identifying what plastics are attributable to local environmental pollution in their carefully collected samples versus coming from the ship or researchers themselves. Now, samples at this scale are very easily contaminated. These are low shed shirts and there isn't a lot of orange fiber pollution. Because in forensic science, we need to disprove that any of the samples we find are actually from us and this shirt. If you take a look at one of the fibres from this shirt, I can identify this really easily because it's so distinctive. This particular shape, this delustrant particulates, and also using a polarised light microscope and looking at these colours here, it tells me this is a polyester fibre from this particular garment. The last hypothesis the team is testing is that of atmospheric deposition airborne microplastics flying around and falling out of the sky into the environment around them. We are here on the monkey deck of the Nautilus now with a different type of science bucket. These are orange ones and we use them for analyzing the microplastics air deposition. So we are using orange ones. In this way, we can detect microplastics coming from the same bucket. Yes, we are leaving those buckets here for 24 hours. So every day we come here at 5 p.m. to pick the buckets up to get microplastics that are falling from the atmosphere and take them to the lab for analysis. And let's not mince words. The team is finding a lot of plastics. Using a combination of filtration and polarized light microscopy, they're able to share a preliminary observation. Plastics falling out of the sky around us offshore the coast of Hawaii and they've been found in almost every sample we've analyzed so far. What does this mean for the islands of Hawaii? Their next steps are to finalize the analysis of these data and to answer those hypotheses they set out to test. Is Hawaii a sink, source, or both for microplastics? Is there a difference in the concentration of microplastics near shore versus offshore? Now more soon, this is science the application of both field observation and laboratory rigor to make supported conclusions that empower teams to propose solutions. To get involved, get your science buckets ready. Check out the Rosalia Project to learn more or find your local community organizations that are doing their part to respond to this global challenge. Together, we can understand and protect our one shared ocean and the lakes and rivers that feed it. National Geographic Society is funding this explorer-led research project and four others aboard EV Nautilus to improve our understanding of Hawaii's unique ecosystems, inform conservation efforts, and inspire the next generation of explorers and planetary stewards.